So if I stand on the side, it will be kind of lifted up and okay. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. So are we ready to start? If you are, I'm ready. Are you guys okay? So I'm going to talk a little bit about weathering models. There's a lot of material about weathering models. You can go on YouTube. You can see it in the magazines. But it's always something that I liked. And I thought it would be an easy thing um, to share with you folks. Um, I brought some of the models that I've done. I got some of the materials that I can show you. And when I get through with the presentation, I, I'll actually do some uh, demo. I got a car that's kind of in progress. And I'll show you some of what I do with the chalks. Okay. To go ahead with the next slide. So none of the techniques I'm going to show you are things I invented, right? I mean, this is all pretty common. Uh, people that I like and that I've copied, George Ditka, Jim Six, Peely Seaborg, John Pryke. There's probably others, and I ask forgiveness from them if that I'm not recognizing them, okay? So go ahead. Um, so why do you why do you want to weather rolling stock? Well, I like it because I think it really improves the appearance of it, right? Um, I want to keep it simple. I don't want to uh, take a lot of time to do it. Um, I might take more time than you want to take, but well, you you can judge that yourself. And the idea is to to have fun. Um, I got started uh, with the techniques that I'm going to show you because I had. Uh, begun weathering with an airbrush and I found that I just I, you know airbrushes are good and you can do a lot of nice things with them I still use an airbrush for weathering sometimes on locomotives and the like but I got tired of cleaning the airbrush and setting it all up and et cetera et cetera so the techniques that I'm using here as you'll show as I go through the materials there's there's no airbrush involved go ahead uh, so what do I use um, I use a lot of rattle cans, um, cheap stuff like Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer is one of my favorite. It's kind of a gray, uh, very flat color, and I use it for trucks and underbodies and different things. I use uh, kind of the standard red primer also for underbodies. You, you, there's all different kinds of primers you can get. And if you buy, you know, Ace Hardware or whatever, it's a different color red than Rust-Oleum, and you you can kind of experiment with that or Cryon or whatever. Um, but you know, they're all about the same um, in cost. I guess the hardware brands are are cheaper, but I I like those. Um, you can also get a, a matte finish, which is a clear from Cryon. You can get a big thing, and it lasts a long time. Um, and it works pretty well, but it, you, you can get it on, you know, spray it on too heavy. It's pretty easy to do. And then it, it will uh, kind of turn your model uh, uh, kind of a, a white color in a sense, right? It, it'll tone it down in some ways if you want that. I like the Tamiya colors. They're little spray cans and they work really well. Um, I think they're great for painting models. I painted steam locomotive models uh, with that with those as well um, but they're expensive and you know they don't last as long but a uh, couple colors that i really like uh well first they're flat clear is a, is a works really really well the other color i use a lot of is they have what they call a red brown which is kind of a rusty color and it, it works pretty well for painting couplers which i'll show go ahead the other thing that I like is the pan pastels. And there's lots of people that have used those pan pastels. Um, I, I bought two sets of those and it, I guess it's not cheap. I can't remember. It's like $40 for a set like one of these. But I've, I've had them now for five or six years and I'm not 
close to you know using them up in some way. Um, I use the oxide colors um, for red cars mostly, and I use uh, kind of the grays and the blacks typically for for black cars. And I I've brought a you know most of the cars are oxide that, that I brought that I that I've weathered, but you'll see there's one there that's black. Um, the uh, the oxide colors I think they're called those uh, a railroad weathering set, and that comes with a different shades of raw umber, which is good for modeling dirt. Um, there's also kind of a brown in there that you can also use for dirt. And if you were going to get one set, that's what I would buy. Um, but it, I don't like it on the black cars very well. <laughs> and so I was trying it, so I bought the grays and, and, uh, and blacks and used those. Um, I use paint brushes um, to apply these colors, and I'll just pass this around i i only brought the oxide but i'll pass that around so you can kind of see what i use and you don't want to open that up because unless you want to get dirty <laughs> um the other thing that you can use are pencils there uh there's the actor here's a credit i forgot to put in now that i remember but there's a remember the actor i think it's michael gross um he had an article i think in uh, model railroad hobbyist online about using colored pencils to actually do weathering for cars. And you, you can create shadow lines with the pencils. Um, if you use a standard like number two pencil, you can actually uh, paint sharp edges like in a, um, you know, where in a hopper car in the bottom where it's, it uh, splits, right? To, to make the coal go into the different pockets. And it'll actually look shiny kind of like uh, you know, the, the paint's been scraped away. So that's something that I, I use. Um, and I, I have colored pencils that I use sometimes, but I, I found, in a sense, I've gotten away from that. I'm not, I don't use those too much anyway. But they work, and again, they're cheap, and, you know, you just have a pencil sharpener, and away you go, and it's, it's pretty good. Okay, next slide. Uh, painting trucks. So painting trucks and wheels... I think if you do that, to me, if you do that to your model, that's one of the, the best things you could ever do, right? So you get rid of the shiny wheels. And I had, you know, tried to create wheel mass and everything. And, and when I used the, I think they were the acrylic uh, laser cut wheel mass, they worked pretty good. But if you use the Rust-Oleum paint on it, the solvents in the paint attacks the plastic and they, they end up breaking. Um, Maybe if you use acrylic paint, it would work. But I got away from it. I just put the trucks on a on a stick, you know, bamboo skewer, and I just take the spray can, and I usually paint the truck and the wheels. Um, and of course, you have to rotate the wheel. You have to let it dry and rotate the wheels because you'll get shadows from the frames. The the trucks that I have here, um, I wanted to keep the kind of red color you see. So I didn't paint the truck. So I just have an old truck, put the wheels in it and spray the truck again with the wheels in it to get the wheels gray. So these are uh, trucks that I've painted. I haven't put chalks on it or done anything else with it, which, but it's kind of where I would start with. So I'll pass one of those around. Um, okay, go ahead, next slide. Um, couplers, I like to paint the couplers too. Um, Paley Seaborg, he said, you know, use this model master leather. And I did that um, with an airbrush and it works really well. And I like the color, but yeah, you have to use the airbrush, which I said I don't like. So most of what I do now is I use the Tamaya paints. I use the kind of red brown to paint my couplers. Why do I use the Tamaya paint? It, it tends not to gum up the coupler, right? If you're painting a coupler, you get too much paint on it, the knuckle doesn't want to open, you know, you don't want that. So you don't want to uh, uh, spray it too hard, right? No, I just use the rattle cans, okay? Uh, their paints uh, work quite well airbrushing and I've, I've used them um, and they, the, their paints are kind of neat because you can actually use lacquer thin them with, with them to thin it if you want, or you can use water. It's a funny formulation they have. Um, 
you know, but if you're using lacquer thinner with it, again, you better have a mask and you better have a, a booth because it's pretty nasty. Okay. But so I'll pass this around. How do I hold the couplers? It's just cardboard, right? This is probably from an Amazon box that I got. You know, you, you get boxes all the time. Maybe you can find one. Uh, this is pretty thin cardboard, but I'll pass it around. There's some couplers in it. And you just, it's just corrugated. And you just stick the coupler into the corrugation and then you can hold the cardboard and you can paint. Okay, no, no, because they're, they're, you, you, I mean, if you stuck it in too far, yeah, you could do that. But those are all whisker couplers. That's the only kind I use now. So I have never had a problem with uh, harming the whisker itself, but. If you, no, if you, if you uh, spray it on too, too much, you get it too heavy, it, it may freeze the knuckle and you can just loosen it up. If you want, you could probably apply a little lacquer thinner and take the paint off. Um, I haven't had a problem with that, which is why I like it. If, if I, I've tried to use like the Rust-Oleum paints and it's hard to control how much goes on. And then you have a lot of that. You, you know, you'll freeze the knuckles and okay, you can still get them on frozen, but it, you know, doesn't work as well. I like the cardboard too, because it, it, the interior part of the coupler, the shank that you're putting into the uh, coupler box doesn't get painted and you don't want any friction there. The paint's going to add some, some friction, but you want the coupler to be able to swing. So if you don't paint it, I think that works better as well. Okay. Okay. Next slide. Um, I like to paint the insides of my cars, uh, especially the hopper cars and the like. I think it's hard uh, to find photographs um, of inside of cars. And I think Matt covered this a couple meetings ago. You, you had some kind of presentation on painting inside of cars, right? A couple of years ago? All right. Anyways, rather than the, the bare plastic, I just, I painted it. Uh, I like this, I think it's this warm caramel color. There's, there's different ones. And I, I try to vary it a little bit um, what paint I use. The part of the problem is if you use the same weathering techniques on all your cars, they all look the same in a sense. And the real world isn't, isn't like that, right? So if you, if you use different color paints slightly, it's probably just fine. But anyways, <clears throat> this is it's hard to find this color in a flat. But if it's shiny like this, you can spray the, the clear flat over it and you'll, you'll be fine, okay? Yeah. From, from being unloaded, they still be in them when they brought them in. And there's nothing slipperier than coal dust on a shiny <laughs> After they set there for a day or two, they start to turn red rust. And if they sat there for a week or better or do the writing, they would be all rust colored on the inside. So you have to choose your day and which way you're going to weather them. <laughs> How long have been sitting there? Well, I have a question. To, like Mark, I've looked for photos of the inside of hoppers, and they're hard to find. So what? So you're saying that when when it's brand new, that I mean, close inspection, is it shiny from being done? It's like it's going to be black. Well, both. It depends on what part of the car you're in. If there's residue from coal, it'll be black. If it's an area where the coal rubs when it comes out, it'll be shiny, shiny steel. But I was on YouTube yesterday watching a video of the Sandusky docks for Norfolk Southern unloading the old fancy dock. Oh, yeah, with the McMiler. See, all the Norfolk Southern cars were, of course, painted gray on the outside. And I looked because the, the drone that was taking the pictures of the unloading dock that was up above, and you could see down inside the car. And as the car would come in to be unloaded, they, it got sprayed with water to keep the dust down. 
but the walls of those cars were identical to the outside color of the car. They were still new enough that they still had enough paint on them that they were gray. Well, the, the newer cars now are aluminum or stainless steel, so they don't rust in the same way as the old old opera cars. Um, the, the, the thing, I don't know if you can tell, but that masking, uh, you just take that masking tape, right, that's big and wide, and you just wrap it around the car. So you see what, that's the car that's masked, that looks blue. That's actually this, this opera car, right? And just mask it like that, and then you can paint the inside without getting, uh, you know, the paint on the outside. And it doesn't take very long to do that, which is good. And I haven't uh, broken off any, you know, stirrups or anything doing that either. So, but, okay, next slide. Um, you know, you use these rattle cans and the, the nozzles clog. I don't have uh, the best solution for that. I've used this goof off stuff, which is nasty stuff. I, uh, but it does work. It'll get the paint out and then hopefully you can, um, you know, use that nozzle again. Sometimes the nozzles clog, if you want to use that, that, paint can it's still got a lot of paint and you can just get a nozzle from another uh spray paint you know and put it on there and it'll work but that's one of the issues um that you have with using these rattle cans and and then the other thing that i use you can tell my hand there i use these uh latex exam gloves i get them at costco i think they're twenty dollars and you get like i don't know how many of them a thousand so you know like 500 pairs or something okay so they last a long time saves your hands they're not uh they're not real sturdy but you know you're not going to get the paint on your hands with that which is a nice thing okay turn the can upside down when you're done spraying yeah i've i've done that and uh yeah i don't know so anyways so this this is a a car you know usually what i what i start on the outside of the car i just spray it with a clear flat and this one I use the Tamiya paint. You can also, like I said, use that uh, Krylon. You can use dull coat if you have it. I mean, there's lots of different ones. But uh, what I found if, when I'm weathering with the chalks is if you spray, spray it with a clear flat, it will adhere. And that's what you want. If it's just the, the plastic or the paint that's often used by the manufacturer, I, I can't get the... the uh, pan pastels to stick to it as well as I'd like. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, weathering trucks. This is kind of a cool subject. And before I even moved here, I went on the web and looked at it and who did I find? <laughs> <laughs> and so that's really cool. Okay. Um, but we weathering trucks is kind of neat. And there's a big difference between um, the friction bearing trucks and the roller bearing trucks, right? The friction bearing trucks collected a lot of grease, generally a lot dirtier. The wheel faces were also uh, uh, generally, uh, you know, more black on the friction bearing trucks. On the, the more modern trucks, you'll see that the wheels uh, can be uh, either kind of an oxide color, you know, just rust from the, the iron. Some, sometimes, you know, they're dusty gray color. They'll, they'll be different, but they tend not to be real, real black. Although you can see a lot of variations. Um, yeah, and, and the forum post is really good. So I, I highly recommend it. You can go to that. Um, okay, you can go to the next one. No, oh, okay. Bottom picture of the truck. Yeah. Did you actually put the writing on your trucks? I don't because I don't model, model that era and I don't like graffiti. No, no, that's actually a photo. So the, the top photo is Matt's. The bottom photo is actually mine. And that's a car out in uh, Salt Lake City, thereabouts. I was visiting my uh, son and his wife and, you know, went rail fanning and, and found that. It's, it's a blow up. I mean, I think I had the whole car, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds, of, I mean, the, if you look at the people um, who actually do 
really serious weathering, right? There's people, I mean, they're, they're treating it kind of like art and they would, you know, do that and everything, but they'll spend 40, 50 hours weathering a single car, right? I don't have the patience for that myself. So, and you're not going to have a layout if you do that either, right? <laughs> right, because you're never going to get through it. So, and anyway, okay, yeah. Um, so this is kind of what I do, I, and I to to my trucks. Um, although when I took this photograph, I think uh, it kind of looks a, more uniform than I wanted it to look. But uh, I used raw umber on the, the truck side frames. I, I used black um, around the journal boxes. I used oxide on the backs of the wheels and on the axles to kind of make them rusty because they don't get the same amount of grease on them. Um, but, uh, you know, you can, you can spend a lot of time on it. But I, I do like spending time on the, on the truck. So if you see your car on the layout and... The axle's rusty and the wheels are dirty. To me, that looks looks good. Now, I do get, this is, uh, you know, I painted the truck. I do the oxide. But you can see that the treads aren't shining. That's something I take care of later. So we'll, we'll show that too. Okay, go ahead. Next. So to clean the trucks uh, I use this goof off stuff because it cuts through paint. If you if you paint the trucks and you leave it for a week or two weeks and the paint really hardens up it'll still take it off. It's harder if you do it you know a day after you've painted or something it'll it'll take it off. But I just put some of that on a paper towel, put that on a piece of track and you can run the truck back and forth on that and it'll take the paint right off the wheels and you'll get if the, if the wheel was shiny it's shiny again and i think it looks really nice i like that so some of the wheels you get aren't completely shiny you know like the kd wheels you're not gonna make those shiny they're they're kind of blackened already but if you get the kind of the plated wheels um it looks good the, the goof off is smelly stuff um kind of like the rust-oleum paint and so you know a good way to do this is in your garage you know in the summer like painting and stuff so you, you don't I, I don't do the painting inside my house because of this with these rattle cans even if it's cold in the winter you can go out in the garage and spray and then it's not that smells not in your house um <clears throat> yeah I, I do the same thing by using lacquer thinner it evaporates really quickly this goof off it evaporates really quickly too <clears throat> And I, I started using this and I haven't tried lacquer thinner, but I imagine it works. Yeah, like, well, okay. yeah, this this stuff stink, really does stink. What I haven't done is tried uh, like mineral spirits, which you can get the odorless mineral spirits, which they, I think they've taken the benzene out, right? It's probably safer. So I'll probably try that, but I haven't yet. <laughs> Towards the flange. Yep. Haven't tried that. Okay. <laughs> but wear eye protection. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, and then on the outside of the car, all right, so it, it, you're kind of following along. This was a hopper car. Um, hold it up. Actually, I'll, I'll pass this around. But it started out by painting the inside, right? Then it did flat. And then you get uh, to the last part where you're actually applying the chalks. And this is just, in a sense, what I do, I use dark oxide on the ribs and the rivets of the models, kind of the model of grime. And then you can use different shades of oxide to kind of create um, color variations, which I, I really like the chalks for that. And for dirt, I use the raw umber on the lower sides and, and the interior, you know, you can do what you want, but dark oxide, raw umber uh, on the inside. And you can even paint the couplers with uh, pan pastels. And so if you, you know, I say I painted it brown. Okay, well, why would I paint it brown and then use the pan pastels? Well, I like the color of the pan pastel oxide. It's a little brighter. 
and it'll stick to the paint. If you try to do it on the unpainted coupler, it won't stick. But so here, here's that car and you can pass it around. That one looks like it's set it now, but at least it was the one thing. <laughs> yeah, and I think all my all my hopper cars are kind of looked that way for the most part. Okay, next slide. I think that's about probably the last one. Okay, so I did uh, leave one thing out after I uh, after I prepared this, and uh, the other thing that I use is a these uh, Tamiya panel line accent colors. This is like a pin wash. You can do something similar with uh, Indian ink, uh, Indian ink and alcohol, but these come in different colors and I really like this uh, brown color. I didn't use that on the hopper car that's going around. Um, so, I mean, everything that I showed you in the presentation is what I did to that car, but I have used this on uh, for example, this car, this, this is an Accurail uh, box car. And to get the, the lines to show up, I've used this brown panel wash. I'll pass that around. Or be careful of the underframe on that car. It's got brake details. So it's, it's. I ordered some of that part, so I'm glad you brought it. Yeah. Now I know how to it. It's like it is just working. Well, the, the thing about that is it does get old after a while. And once it's old, it kind of the whatever the uh stuff that they use to hold the the pigment in suspension it kind of gets a little gummy and it doesn't work as well it doesn't spread out like it's supposed to be the, the whole idea is that you kind of paint it on the side of the car and you're not worrying about where you get it and it runs it into all the cracks oh i i don't know you know it's two or three years or something so I haven't tried it, but I, I have I have it, but I think that it doesn't have lacquer thinner in it. I mean, this smells a little bit, but it doesn't smell like the Tamiya lacquer thinner. <laughs> I think that their lacquer thinner is uh, very volatile. Yeah, uh, in my opinion, anyways, it's, it's smelly. So there's more cars up here, uh, black, orange, right? Orange reefer, this is all done. The car I brought uh, in just to kind of show you a little bit about what I do is uh, this is a Mather box car. It's just a lifelike one that I I got, and this um, this has got the panel wash on it, and it's been uh, coated with flat. I haven't done any chalks on it, and so what I was going to do was just show a little bit, if you'd like, about the you know what I do with the chalk. That won't take so too too long. Panel wash, put uh, dull coat on top of. It. No, I do the dull coat. Well, you, it, I don't think it matters too much. I think actually on this one, I did the panel wash first and then I did the dull coat. Okay, but if I if I forget to do the panel wash and I've done the dull coat or the flat, you can still go back and do the panel wash. Yeah. The other, the other thing is a lot of times after I do the chalk, uh, one of the things you can with the chalk is if you get too much of it on, um, I've tried sometimes to wash it off and you, you can a little bit, but if you coat it again with uh, the flat, that will tone it down quite a bit. Okay. So it, it'll blend it in. So that's kind of a nice thing. If you overdo it, it's not, not too bad. Oh, that's the rust stuff. Yeah. I have not. Yeah. You know, yeah. Matter of fact, they have it at the Black Heart Supply up on Sawmill. Mine's getting a lot old after all these years. But I think it's getting harder. Okay. Yeah, on, the, uh, on the wash side, you have to be careful with the alcohol in Indian ink because it 
does not react well with dull coat. It'll oh yeah, it'll it'll turn it white. Yeah, I found that out the hard way. I've I've switched to um, oil paint. The the kind of comes in the tube that oil artists would paint with. A little dab of that with some turpinoid, which is a some was turpentine uh, it's a little hard to find you can find it at Michael's and watch it you can't that is very similar to the one product that's coming past there's a delay isn't there some in brown some in uh, black I won't watch myself it won't work give, give baseline shadow. so so the other thing you can do also that I found uh, and I think this was uh, I think Jim Six does this, and I, it's where, I think that's where I saw it was. When you put the chalk on, you can also go back with like a turpenoid or with mineral spirits, and you can uh, use a brush and you you apply the uh, the mineral spirits or whatever, and you and you draw your brush, you know, vertically down the model, and uh, that tends to kind of clump up the um, pigment in the chalk but it'll stick around like rivets and things is that that's kind of a cool technique too so i didn't put that into this presentation because it's just something that i started doing but it works pretty well but yeah there was a store and brought, brought the cryolite out and the cryolite bench doesn't disappear oh for, if you use mineral spirits oh is it oh it's going away Where? okay Okay. So, anyways, I'll I'll do a little bit here, and then I'll just pass this around. So that I have, uh, you know, there's there's kind of three or four shades of the oxide here, and what I like to do is uh, I'll start with kind of a, a darker color and run it along the edge of a a vertical, and I'll do that on. Uh, along the ribs on one side, right? And I always, always do it kind of on the same side. And, you know, I'll do it on the corners, okay? And then I'll come back with uh, a lighter shade, right? And I'll kind of run that parallel. And I'm not trying to be really, you know, you don't have to be real exact here and, and it, it it's kind of gonna, create some streaks on the model and it may look kind of bad but then I have yeah, I pass this around this is just the makeup brush right I stole it from my wife we'll post the video later so she can watch it but you, you're allowed to go to salad and buy. <laughs> yeah, you know you can you can pick those up. I mean, the other the other trick is you know you can uh, that your wife may not like, but it's it's getting harder. Is uh, you know they used to wear pantyhose and you can strain your paint with that too, the old ones. That works really well. But uh, my wife doesn't wear pantyhose anymore, so the supplies kind of dried up. Notice I didn't admit to that. <laughs> so anyway, so I, I, I'll, I'll do some of that. I'm not gonna do too much of this. And then, you know, the other thing that I'll do is there's the, it looks like green in here, but it's what they call the, the raw umber. And that I use that typically along the, the bottom of the car and you can go and again, you know, once once this gets sprayed, these colors will be uh, they'll, they'll be muted. You won't you won't see it as much. We'll just put a little bit more in here, and I'm I'm going to stop and just pass this around again, and you guys can take kind of take a look, and and they'll have the the right. There's one side of the car that I haven't done, and the other side of the car that I've done a little bit of work, so you can kind of see what it's like. Okay. I'm sorry. Kicked up. Oh, uh, th that I, 
I ha have struggled with it. I think the best technique that I've found for it, I, I mean, I've used chalks for that. Like I've used some of the, there's a really light color and I'll put it, but it's hard to get it. Uh, it, it spreads out too much, right? It's not the, what you see. And so I'm still working on that, but I think the best thing that I found for that probably is actually paint. And there's some people that will put paint on a brush and then they'll, they'll kind of flick it on with their, you know, they'll take their hand like this and right on the side of the car, but I haven't mastered that. So if you look at my cars, you won't see, uh, if, if you come up and look at these, you're not going to see too much of that. Okay. You could, yeah. Yeah, you could do that with airbrush. The outside is hard to kind of put in different colors of crowd Wipe it up or do the yeah. big sweep. Yeah, so I've tried to do that. And like I said, because it's a real common feature on cars, I mean, you see it all the time. But uh, what I've done with the, with the chalks, it hasn't, I would say it hasn't worked all that great. It gets too wide, okay? It, you know, it feathers out. I'll, I'll do a little bit on the truck. With the, with the trucks, I usually kind of take this bright color and uh, I just paint it on the axle and I'll paint it on the back of the wheels. And I don't worry too much about it because if it looks too bright, you can, uh, you can go back over with uh, like the raw umber and, and uh, it'll tone it down. But, and, and so the whole idea is, I mean, you, you t probably the trucks take the longest time to do. And once you paint the wheels, if you don't really want to do it, it's okay. You know, it's up to you. And I'll, I'll, again, I'll use some of the umber on the, uh, on the side frames and, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this in front of you because that gets boring and uh, oh. yeah we'll leave it at that and I'll just pass these around again real quick and you can kind of compare they're, they're not I would spend more time on it Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll just pass the cards around. So questions? Yeah. I've been eBay for 22 years. And I've noticed that leather cars on eBay don't sell as well as non-leather cars. And yet, like you said when you started your presentation, that weathering brings out a realism as to like what the real railroad cars look like. And a good job of weathering makes them look really good. A bad job of weathering is not a good scope of it. Does that. But why is it that, that good weathered stuff doesn't appear on the ah, Well, I don't know. I mean, there, there are people that are selling uh, good. It, it, there's a uh, website, I can think called the weathering shop. I don't know if anybody's seen that, but these are the people that spend like 40, 50 hours weathering a car, maybe, maybe more, and they look really great. But you're going to be, you know, you're paying for that if you buy that. Um, I know for myself, I like weathering them. So I don't, and I don't generally see cars on eBay that are weathered that I like. Maybe if I saw a car that I really liked how it was done, I would, I would buy it, but yeah. Stuff from out west and so forth, so I put them on eBay. I like to never sold them. Yeah. They sat on there for months. Yeah. You still got them? <laughs> 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 Aren't these still heavy? What is it? Weighted them a little bit extra? Uh, I think that one is just stock, but um, that, uh, that, uh, Reefer, the wood reefer, I might have put some extra weight in it. This one's got extra weight in it too. Very nice. 
Could be. Bottom heavy. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, they they have weight in them. I put I put uh, weight in them and on the on the hopper cars. I don't know that I did any weight on that hopper car, but a lot of times I use uh, steel shot in them, and I, I just put it in on the bottom under on the underside where you can't see it. Have you ever tried to use the uh, Chester toll coach? Oh yeah, uh, the new one is uh, is not worth buying. Oh okay. Because they, well, they ran out of the old one. It was hard to find. They changed their formula on it, and it is absolutely terrible. Well, I, I, uh, I had used that, and I, I had trouble controlling the spray, and I would get it on too heavy, and then I had problems. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time painting a GP35 in Ann Arbor because I used to live in Ann Arbor and then I was weathering it and I used some, I was trying to use the Indian alcohol <laughs> on top of the dull coat. And I got kind of a frosted look that I was not real happy with. So at that point I said, no, I, I stopped using it. Yeah, so I I don't know. I haven't used it. The the this Tamiya TS80 stuff works. Just it's really good. So yeah, I think the Kryolan I it works, but I still have trouble sometimes when I I put it on too thick. So if I have a model that I think is I put a lot of time into, or it's like a locomotive, I I won't go near it with that, or I don't feel confident going near it with that, but. I'm going to try it to me at dinner. I've heard nice things about it. Uh, and they offer that both a rattle can and a something you can airbrush too, I think. Uh, on the, the clear, I don't, I haven't, I think that they do, but I have not uh, tried it. So um, Model Master used to have a clear flat that wasn't dull coat I, and I had used that and it worked pretty well and I liked it and you could you airbrush it right um but the 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 Tamiya stuff I I think it's like eight or nine dollars you know it's a small can and it's like eight or nine dollars but it, it, you know if you got the money it's it works really well and you don't have to set up the airbrush use the uh the rattle can the dull coat rattle cans and I've had like you had trouble with it, just it went on too yeah. thick. It, it tends to orange peel and that kind of stuff. Um, so I went to airbrushing it uh, just out of those, the non. Well, they come in bottles too. But I had now I had the new stuff. I haven't tried that yet. I'm to hear and you, John, talk about the new formula not being as good. I'm worried about that. But well, so I think all of these cars are I probably done with the the uh, to to me as stuff the clear flat, but. Um, I, I do use the Krylon. You can look at those. They're, I think th those are couplers that don't have a knuckle springs in them. Because that's what I found in my, I have a box of those. You paint them without the knuckle springs and they put them back in later. Hell no, those they just the knuckle springs they, came out. And I, can't, I got that, and I and all the all the couplers that I, where they lose the knuckle springs, I just put in a in a in a uh, container, right? Thinking that someday maybe I'll put I'll put in knuckle springs back in. But sorry, George, you're saying I found that rattle can also like a bonus for the paint was dry. Yeah. Oh no, it's yeah. You got to have distance because it's. Yeah, that's why I can't remember where I got mine at, Mark. Have you ever tried the uh, smaller makeup brushes? 
One's got a brush on one end and like a pointed end on the other end? Uh, no. It's got like a little arrow on one end with a brush on the other. I can't remember where I bought mine at. No, I haven't. I haven't experimented too much with the with the brushes. Um, 